Hey there guys, it's me, Don, and uh, it's about 8.16. Yeah, 8.16 right now, and uh, I probably should have gone to bed about eight hours ago. Yeah, see, funny thing is, is that around 12 in the morning, I decided to pop in Magic the Gathering 2014 on Steam for maybe about a couple hours, and uh, it's now 8 a.m., and I've just stopped playing about 10 minutes ago. So, uh, as long as I'm making good decisions, I might as well do a little video on someone I've been meaning to respond to for quite a while. This is going to be a response to Jamin, aka the Blackbuster Critic, a uh, guy on here who does rants on YouTube about things that go on in gaming. You know, like everybody else and their fucking dog. But, I, I, I down talk the dude, but honestly, he, he really is an innovator. He has set the path for gaming YouTube ranting, with his ability to... Um, hmm. you, you know, the way he, 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 uh, um, but, you know, he's just so fun. Uh, fuck. What has he done again? Um, he got into an argument with life in a tent and won, but that has nothing to do with gaming at all. Okay, look, I'm just gonna be straight with you guys. I've never understood the appeal of Blackbuster Critic, aka Jamin, or whatever the fuck you wanna call him. Never understood the appeal. To me, he's not that funny, and his points just have never been that good. It makes me wonder, honestly, how he is that popular. The only thing I can come up with is he's been doing this since like 2007. I, I don't know, but his newer channel, because he's been through like seven of them at this point, is a gaming rant channel, as I stated, but it's mostly focused on anti-Xbox One news, because I guess since YouTube has come up, that's just going to happen with every generation now that we're just going to turn this into some giant YouTube war. Hey, you want to learn a quick fact about me? Do you want to know when I stopped caring about the gaming wars? Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I never cared. I didn't care in 1999 when I was four that I was buying the Sega Dreamcast because it had the next step in graphics. I didn't care in 2003 when I got my GameCube because it had Gecko processing. I certainly don't care now. I don't care about the console wars. The fact of the matter is, I buy a console to play games. You know, isn't that kind of the point of a gaming console? No matter how much Sony and Microsoft tries to sell me TV? But enough about it. Because we're here to talk about one of his videos. Now, not one of his videos about the Xbox One, where basically he describes it as how this little box is the a reincarnated version of Satan, and how Gabe Newell will descend from the skies and bring all the good little PC gamers up to the giant valve in the sky, where they can play their PC games with eternal bliss, as Gabe Newell stays here and fights the good fight against the evil Microsoft. Surprisingly, I'm not going to be talking about one of those videos. Yet. Uh, I'm actually here to talk about a video he made uh, regarding what some of the comments Peter Molyneux made about GTA V's record sales at this conference, I guess you could say. He was asked to speak at this mobile, mobile gaming console. Gaming console? What? He was asked to speak at this mobile... What? He was asked to speak at this mobile gaming talk event and that's the best it's gonna get people so anyways I, I i guess i sort of want to respond to this video because there's a lot about it that just sort of you know hit me the wrong way like the first 30 seconds up to a minute are just like snide little jabs in a very 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 brief retrospective of peter molyneux's career seriously i don't think he talks about anything before 2008 other than a brief mention to fable one but after that, there are two insults that personally stick out to me. One of them at the one minute mark and another one at the 250 mark. Take a listen. Now, Peter, we know what you've been doing throughout the entirety of your career in the gaming market. And one thing is for sure is that you will never achieve what Rockstar has. A billion dollars in a couple of days is not impressive to somebody who has never achieved anything even close to that. Hmm. Ooh. A little extra bold today. Anyways. You know, I, I kind of agree with that. That GTA 5 
in its three days have sold more than any game Peter Molyneux has ever made, even if you were to combine them together. I, 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 I can't deny that. If you do the math on it, that's, that's the case. But what I find incredibly arrogant about that statement is the fact that he says that Peter Molyneux will never achieve that. That there's no way he will ever make a game that sells as much as Grand Theft Auto V or really anything Rockstar ever does. Which is, again, like I said, incredibly arrogant, but, you know, he's on YouTube, so he is, of course, like every other gaming YouTuber, some gaming guru slash correspondent that apparently have a crystal ball and are just fucking clairvoyant and just... Clairvoyant? Clairvoyant? What? he's clairvoyant and can just call it right down the line like all these gaming correspondents think they can. Like how a lot of them said that Sega and Sonic Team will never make a good Sonic game ever again, which we all know that's exactly what happened, right? Also, on top of that, while we're in the neighborhood and we're measuring uh, gaming sale penises, I'd like to point out a little fun little fact that Fable 2 is still the number one selling RPG on the Xbox 360, making $3.5 million. Now, keep in mind, this is the same console that has all three Mass Effect games, Elder Scrolls 4 and 5, and Fallout 3 and New Vegas. And if you want a Rockstar comparison, well, if we're talking just the 360, it outsold Red Dead Redemption, Red Dead Redemption making $1.8 million. And before you bring up, oh, well, those games sold overall better, yes, but those are all on the other consoles, and I'd argue that Fable 2 technically has a handicap by being console exclusive. Your game is going to sell more if you have more platforms to get it out to, because you have more people who can buy it. You see how that works? You can't even really, that's, you can't even really argue with me on that one. Also, before I get into like the real reason why I'm responding to this video, not to say that other stuff isn't important, but if that was just it, I could have made a like a text wall on his comment section. But I want to talk about two things about the video, and I I I, I don't mean like what he's saying. I mean the actual video itself. One. If you've never watched a BBC video before, he, he does this thing where just like out of nowhere, he'll just, he'll just take these pauses. I, I can show, illustrate it here. At 2.06, he takes like a seven second pause. And it's just like, why? Like, I, I, I've come up with two theories why he does this because he does it all the time in his videos. Like, and in fact, if the video was longer, it would show up multiple times. In fact, I think it does. I just didn't count them. Um, but, I, I have two theories as to why. Either A, he's padding because he doesn't have that much to say, and if you notice in his longer videos, he really does talk in circles. Or two, did I just go from A to two? And, or B, he's incredibly arrogant and just thinks everything he says is gospel, so he does this just so we can hang on every word he says. And honestly, the kind of unfortunate part is I could believe it was both. But now, it's time for the thing that really got me to respond to him, that sort of really made me want to even talk about this video to begin with, and it's comments he made at the 116 minute mark. And I'm just gonna let them play all the way through, and then I'll come back and respond to him, okay? Okay. Rockstar made a billion dollars in just a couple of days of their game being sold. But for some strange reason, at this particular event, during his inspirational speech, Peter expresses, that what Rockstar has done is not impressive. Make it a billion dollars off of one game title in just a couple of days is not impressive. To Peter Molyneux, what's impressive is these mobile games. These shitty mobile games like Angry Birds, like Candy Crush, like Heyday, and other bullshit fucking casual pieces of shit applications on Android and iPhone. <sighs> okay. Um, where should I start? All right. Well, first, BBC made his first big mistake, as in he cited his source. Okay, his source being a website that he himself writes to and his brother, so, you know, think of that information what you will. But uh, he links a website, or his web or a website he writes to, Gaming Realms, where they posted a news article about that in which there's a link which, if you click on that, goes to the story, which explains in detail. You know, a link a, within a link. A story within the that actually links you to the actual story, you know, because that's good journalism. 
And in that story, you know, the actual good one, it actually brings into light some of the comments uh, Peter Molyneux had made and put maybe even a different perspective on it, saying that basically he may have found it unimpressive because of his own personal experiences with mobile gaming and with his own franchise, the Fable franchise. The idea that his franchise through the three games had made over 150 million dollars to put that in perspective that's as much as atlas was bought for by sega recently 150 million dollars and yet this little device that steve jobs has made in fact i think he quoted directly saying uh steve jobs that son of a bitch changed my life or i believe that's how that uh, thing goes how this little device can do all these different things and still get these games out to a wide audience and that's what inspired Peter Molyneux that he could change gaming by finding a new way to entertain people and inter interact while making you know that cash money so and if you actually if you read the article it puts his comments into a different light but you know of course that that didn't make the video at all BBC failed to mention that because you know <laughs> Hey, you already got the camera right out, right? You know, there's no there's no turning back now, you know. Let's just leave out those things. I mean, those are just minor details, not even worth mentioning. But really, it's his comments on casual gaming that truly do irk me because, well, I, I, I guess I should be used to it. It's that hardcore gamer opinion on casual gamers and casual gaming which is that it's ruining gaming and all this other stuff mobile gaming and casual gaming is just the scum and bane of gaming those those filthy casual gamers with those filthy casual games i mean look at them they're just so disgusting they're based on such just terror just based on the worst aspects of gaming like colorful looking worlds and addictive gameplay and you know pick up and play style you know kind of the things that games were fucking built on and action i mean seriously if i use that same mentality of hardcore gamers used to demonize certain games as casual gamers i could put games like fucking asteroids into that category hell asteroids has less going for it than most of those games that are released for the iphone and asteroid devices and the retro super mario brothers games actually has a lot more in common with a lot of the games that are put up on those marketplaces so i don't see anybody calling those casual games either just just look hardcore gamers if i if i could just lend me your ears for a second you know if i could just pull you away from the steam hubs and 4chan for just like one second just pull it in and take a knee um your little fight against casual gamers and casual gaming needs to go away okay you just need to stop at the end of the day casual gaming has done way more for this industry than it has done harm and whenever i do ever bring this up a hardcore gamer's first response to me is well casual gaming is the reason why we see so many game franchises dumbing down to and making things easier making it streamlined uh, like streamlining is such a bad thing and such a like streamlining is a bad word in the industry no it's not bad that's not bad there's bad streamlining good streamlining i feel is when and i i, I know i'm probably taking this straight from someone else and by all means let me know is when you take cryptic unnecessarily complicated bullshit and you make it simple to understand and use but still have all those complexities it's when you take someone who has never played the game before and with through good tutorials and through great understanding of the game can bring the player up to the level that they need to be at okay there then there's bad streamlining which treats everybody like they've never played a fucking video game before and like we're all in kindergarten and that is bad streamlining and I think that is not the fault of casual games or casual gamers. That's the fault of game designers treating everyone like they're stupid. The point is, for you, Jamin, hardcore gamers all around, that this just, it, it needs to stop. The genie's not going back in the bottle. And you have really two options as far as I see it. You can A, choose to ignore it, which is a very valid option. Or B, you could try it entertain it try to see the benefits the good that the game that these type of games have done for the industry 
Now, me personally, I don't care which one you do. I just want you to stop bitching about it. Because it's dumb. So, uh, yeah. That's about it. I mean, that's all I have to say about this video. And honestly, his videos are so atrocious at times that I could just make a series responding to him. And I honestly just about might. I, I don't know if it'll be every video of his, but it'll be the ones I hold strong opinions on, at least. So, that's all I got to say on the matter. Uh, I think I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> Anyways, that's all I got to say on the matter. I'm Don Gamer, and uh, yeah. Keep playing them games for Dust Till Dawn, and I will check you later.